some of the land, although it's cheaper in the market, it's still a little expensive for the people. So many of the project people would have to uh, to house themselves in a in a higher density uh, housing arrangement and uh, like probably a plot of say thirty square meter or even less huh? twenty eight square meter thirty square meter and make it two story or two and a half story, which is uh, which make the density. Uh, more or less similar to the medium rise uh, apartment, about five story. Yeah. If you make it uh, a plot of say thirty square meter, two story, yeah, row house, the density will be quite similar to the five story flat. So not so bad, yeah. And so therefore we we have several housing projects in Bangkok where people could acquire land this way. Not only Bangkok, in other regional cities. They find, always find land, <laughs> I would say. yeah, uh, Because we give the, a lot of freedom to the people. Once you give freedom to the people organization, I believe that they can always find it. Yeah? And this is what I told uh, our colleague in the Philippines, that leave it to the people because they say, no, it's not possible in Manila, in Quezon City. It's such high density, definitely. If the government is the one who uh, acquire land or expropriate land, very difficult. But if we leave it to the people, they would sneak into a lot of uh, possible land because they make slum every day. They, they can find all these different pockets of land and they, they, they can house themselves that way. Now we organize it in a more proper manner. Yeah. If the Residents, former residents can accommodate everybody. And no matter how you build this housing project, I, I think in general the landlord will not uh, worry much. Before there was uh, some thinking like, uh, well, we should build into the apartments and so on. But I think after the implementation of the Ban Man Kong for 10 years, now the landlord must uh, understand that. and. This pressure doesn't seem to be very big, and they accept it. You can see a project like Suan Pru, for instance. On one side is the uh, medium-rise apartment. On the other side is just a kind of a row house, three-story or two-story, and it's okay, no problem. So more and more, it's an education process for the landlord at the same time. Yeah, there must be some uh, appropriate or good density, yeah? which uh, would make a, a good relationship of the people who live together. Because too high density. I, I have seen slum, some slum earlier, or even the housing project. If you have, say, the walkway of two meters, and it's so crowded, the clouding, physical clouding situation um, make it very difficult, you know. A lot of things, very intense, the way they use the open space for cooking, for the children are playing and the, the motorbike are trying to pass on that and people are walking, you know. Which means that the intensive needs for such a small space must, must, make, must have made people uh, feel a little headache. Yeah? And it should have some effect, yeah. So I, I feel that there's a need for some proper density also, which is not uh, too much. Huh? It has to be rather high density one way or the other, but you have to deal with the physical uh, situation, huh? how to plan it as properly as possible, how to greening the area, make more uh, plants or trees or a little open space for the children can play or you know that that you have to find element and and I think that in general we're able to make it in every project huh? there, there are open space community centers and all this kind of thing it's possible to decide yeah no matter how the high density it is yeah 
So the best way is to talk and to discuss and to find a, a socially plan, socially management, uh, a collective management system, and uh, you live like a big family, you no, know, uh, in in a social cluster, you no, know, uh, something like that. You know? With a good discussion and understanding, I think uh, that, that, that can be the way to deal with.